As Jason Carter sits on his board waiting to catch his next wave, something pops up next to him in the water. It's the head of an enormous shark. Its snout pushes through the water's surface, and without warning, it begins to chomp down on Jason and his board. He fights for his life, but will he make it back to the shore before it's too late? Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Paya Bay on Maui's North Shore is a beautiful surfing and bodyboarding spot. With its long stretch of white sandy beach and large breakers just offshore, it's popular with locals and visitors alike. The northern shores are known for their perfect combination of natural beauty and tranquility. Green sea turtles frequent the area, and the views out over the Pacific Ocean are breathtaking. Where better, then, to surf? That's what 39-year-old Jason Carter thought when he headed to the bay from his home in nearby Haiku on December 30th, 2023. The surf was good, but the water was murky. Jason was a very experienced surfer. He was an avid outdoorsman, enjoying fishing and surfing, and even spending a winter season in a ski resort in Oregon in the years before. He loved being outdoors and amongst nature. It was a part of who he was. But when he entered the water that day, he was swimming to his disastrous fate. A hidden danger lurked, one that everyone thinks about but pushes to the backs of their minds, thinking that it'll never happen to them. It was a shark, and although the waters around Hawaii are full of them, attacks are relatively rare, especially given the number of people who enter the water each and every year. As Jason joined the other surfers on his board, the shark approached the bay. It was mid-morning, just before 11 a.m. The shark was on the hunt, an opportunistic hunter, always on the lookout for an easy meal. Jason bobbed up and down on his surfboard, not knowing that this would be his last surf. He had been to that spot a hundred times before. Now his legs dangled precariously into the murky Hawaiian seas. From below the water surface, the surfers on top looked like silhouettes perhaps a seal or sea lion floating on the surface. The shark swam up through the water column, up toward the small group of surfers. But it wasn't powering through the water, aiming to knock any of the surfers sky high into the air in a surprise encounter. Instead, it was investigating the potential prey. Perhaps the poor visibility had made it cautious. That's when Jason and his friends saw it the truly terrifying sight of a dorsal fin slicing through the water just feet from where they hovered on their boards. One witness described the fin as large as Jason, who was sitting on his board just a couple of feet away. It was of megalodon-sized proportions. The tip of the dorsal fin was almost as high as Jason's head as he sat there. The terror that ran through their veins as they realized that the shark had come to investigate them and how immensely huge it was, was like nothing they had ever experienced before. But the most terrifying part was yet to come. As Jason and the other surfers instinctively tried to swim away from the shark, its enormous head popped up right next to Jason's board. Its dark gray snout glistening out of the water, its rough skin dripping wet. Behind it was the large shadow of the rest of its body that disappeared below the surface. Jason stared straight into one of its dark black eyes. It was jet black and unblinking, an enormous round thing in the side of the shark's head. The shark's mouth was agape, wide open, displaying rows of razor-sharp teeth. A split second later, the dark eyes rolled back in its head, a protective instinct as it went in for the kill. Jason knew this was it, but there was nowhere for him to go. The shark lunged forward, and its powerful jaws came crashing down around Jason and his board. He instinctively kicked out at the shark, but he couldn't secure a decent hit on it. Unable to maneuver away, Jason was at the mercy of the shark. The shark's sharp teeth tore through his torso like a knife through butter. The sheer force of the bite was unbelievable. Jason screamed. Another surfer raced to the shore to call for help, but Jason tried to fight back. The shark had him in its grip and pulled him from his board. Jason tried desperately to hold on to his board. He tried not to get sucked down below the surface, but the brute was too strong and plucked him from his surfboard in less than a second. Under the water, Jason kicked and punched. He tried desperately to pry open the shark's jaws. It thrashed its head from side to side, sending Jason crashing through the water this way and that, entirely at the mercy of the predator. 
As he was held in the vice-like grip, he could feel the full weight of the powerful bite. The shark resurfaced momentarily, and the water frothed and boiled besides Jason. From the shore, witnesses could see the horror unfolding. The commotion and Jason's cries for help were noticed by others, and those in the water swam for their lives. He was still alive. He was still fighting the battle of his life as he was pulled under the water repeatedly. Each time he resurfaced, gasping for air, and the shark would readjust its grip on him, causing yet more devastating damage as it did so. Finally, the message had got through that the surfer was in trouble and lifeguards raced to the scene on jet skis. The sound of the loud jet ski motors frightened the shark and it released its grip on Jason and swam away. With jet skis scrambled to the position, they circled Jason to make sure that the shark was no longer there. Jason had fought a valiant and brave fight. He was left unconscious in the water. He was still alive, but barely. He bobbed on the surface of the water, surrounded in a pool of his own blood, while the first responders arrived on jet skis. They leaned over and pulled him up on their jet skis and powered back toward the beach. It was now a race against time. Jason had done all he could. Now it was up to the medical expertise of those around him. As Jason was pulled ashore, nobody knew if he was going to make it. He had lost a lot of blood. They lay him down and performed life-saving treatment for him trying to stabilize him before he was rushed to the hospital. Tourniquets were tied around his limbs to staunch the flow of blood, and pressure was applied to the gaping wounds on his torso. When paramedics arrived, he was rushed to the hospital, where he fought for the rest of the day. Sadly, though, Jason lost his battle that evening and succumbed to his horrendous injuries. As news of his death spread, it sent shockwaves through the community. Tributes began pouring in for the much-loved surfer. He was a popular man with many friends in Hawaii and on the mainland. He will be missed by his loved ones, and it left a hole that cannot be filled. His cousins said, Whether you had a lifetime with him or five minutes, you felt like a changed person because of his beautiful spirit. The beaches were closed for the rest of the weekend for a mile in either direction of the attack site, while jet skis patrolled the area. Jason was the eighth person to be attacked by a shark that year in Hawaii, but only the first fatality. As more and more people take to the seas to enjoy the water sports on offer, tragic encounters like this are only going to become more common. Some even suggest that global warming is leading sharks to search for food closer to shore, posing a greater risk to people.